My name is Damien Walter Davis. I am Rendell Professor of English at the University of Aberystwyth in the Department of English and Creative Writing. I'm both an academic and a practitioner and see both roles as interfusing each other in very interesting ways. One wonders what's happened since devolution in 1997. A number of socio-economic changes have obviously resulted in a changed literary landscape and a changed cultural landscape. And what this project is trying to do is calibrate the ways in which that changing political and economic landscape has manifested itself in literary production during that time. I think the landscape has changed interestingly in terms of a wider internationalism. Um, I don't think it's a question of a wider confidence. I think the confidence was there as far as voice, as far as individuality are concerned before. But I think there is a, a wider sense of connectiveness, connectivity not only within Wales but between Wales and the United Kingdom and Europe and globally and perhaps that category of the post-national may be in play here. One wonders whether the project will come down on the side of the post-national post-evolution. Welsh writing in English in poetry post-1997 has been, in many ways, pretty invisible as far as the wider archipelagic narrative is concerned. So it is high time that a project like this integrates that particular tradition, whether it is a tradition. I think personally it's a collection of individuals writing against, in many ways, a tradition. Um, but it will seek to integrate that very valuably and in a salutary way into that wider narrative. This is going to be I think, um, a case of highlighting that which has been elided more than anything else. My name is Godfield and I'm a second year PhD student at Cardiff University. My research traces the impact of devolution on Welsh writing in English. So I take as my starting point the build up to the 1979 referendum on devolution, trace the impact of the no vote in that referendum on Welsh writing in English through to the 1997 referendum to try to establish what changes occur in that period and then look briefly at fiction from Wales in the post devolution era, really. I think at the moment so far it's been quite interesting. Two main patterns that have emerged have been the connection between regional writing and an overall sense of national identity, particularly in the build-up to the 1997 referendum on devolution. And then in the wake of devolution, the emergence of um, a much larger number of women writers in Wales, particularly from very varied cultural and social backgrounds, which seems to be a trend that, that runs in fiction and possibly seems to parallel to some findings that come up in um, research into poetry in that period as well. Um, I'm really interested to be following the Devolved Voices project. It's incredibly interesting to compare research into poetry in the post-evolution era to my own findings on fiction. It'd be really interesting to see if any patterns emerge. I think we've already identified that there are possibly some parallels, um, particularly as an example, the rise of women's writing in the, the post-evolution years, um, and hopefully that's something we can continue to establish. Uh, I'm Neil Alexander. I teach English literature at the University of Nottingham, um, and uh, at the moment I'm working on, uh, well, a couple of things, but in particular a monograph on literary geographies in Britain and Ireland over the past uh, sort of 50 years, so around about, well, beginning in about 1960. One of the things I'm most interested um, to see as an outcome from the, um, the Devolved Voices project is some ref further reflection upon what seems to me uh, an expanded and increasingly refined interest in questions of geography, space, place, landscape um, in many of the most interesting younger um, writers. Um, from from Wales, um, so I'm thinking of people like um, like Zoe Schoolding, like Samantha Wynne Rivach, um, like Patrick McGuinness, um, writers who are often um, looking at spatial connections between local, regional, national, transnational, global um, spaces, but who are also responding in really interesting um, formal 
and, and textual ways to particular um, experiences, I suppose, of, of space and place. My interest in, in Welsh writing in English um, began, I suppose, while I was um, working um, here in, in Wales, teaching at the University of Wales, Trinity Um and, and that's continued into my work at, uh, at Nottingham, where I lecture on R.S. Thomas, where I teach um, the work of, uh, of Zoe Schooling and a number of, uh, of other writers. And I've got um, several PhD students who are working on Welsh writing in English now as well. So there's a sense in which Welsh writing in English, um, it always has, but is, is increasingly expanding in the academy outside of, of Wales, um, although obviously um, Welsh institutions like Aberystwyth are, um, are, are particular focal points. There still isn't an adequately, I, th I think, archipelagic and, and, and comparative um, understanding of poetry as it's produced in, in Wales, in Ireland, um, in, in Scotland, um, and that, that joining up with, I suppose, a, a, an English mainstream. Uh, um, currently, uh, the scene is a particularly rich one and a varied one. Um, it dates back, of course, I feel, to the 60s. I think that's when uh, the, the initiatives that are still important began. But it steadily gained momentum over the last uh, 10, 15 years. Um, and uh, I'm quite excited by the, um, the number of, of younger writers, as well as the established ones, uh, now active. Um, and uh, it, it, it seems to me that it's a body of work that uh, unfortunately is still not receiving as much attention as it might. Uh, what the reason might be for that I don't know. My own personal suspicion is that they might be actually based in the political situation and the fact that Wales remain, remains relatively invisible um, uh, because of its relative political quiescence. Although I do think that uh, uh, devolution uh, has represented a kind of um, a liberating moment for a whole generation of, uh, of writers. I, I'm afraid I take the old-fashioned view that, that uh, culture is common, as Raymond Williams said, and that, uh, that art is everybody's. Uh, I make no distinction between specialists and non-specialists. The specialists are just the privileged ones like me who have been given an opportunity, in my case a lifetime's opportunity. <laughs> Uh, to reflect on matters that are of equal interest and concern and relevance to everybody in, in society. So I, I'm, I'm delighted that the process of this uh, does take very seriously um, that dimension, which, which is the drawing of attention of this work to, to as wide uh, uh, an audience as, as possible.